Hi, everyone, and welcome to Who to the Curve, and this is a Robert Ruiz rant. And today, we're going to be speaking on World War III, the master chessboard, and its possible players. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most exclusive high-stakes chess game of the millennium, World War III. Picture a grand chessboard, not of mahogany, but of geopolitics, where nations play as pieces, and the stakes are higher than your Aunt Mabel's bridge game, with a mix of sarcasm and humor, let's explore the players who might grace this cosmic chessboard and what moves they might make in the hypothetical showdown. Let's talk about the grand masters of the board. First, we need to identify the key players. In one corner, we have the reigning superpowers like the United States and Russia. They're the grand masters, always a few moves ahead, or so they like to think. In another corner, there's China, the rising chess prodigy quietly amassing its pieces. Europe is that unpredictable player who sometimes forgets it's in the game, while the Middle East is the wild card where every move feels like a gambit. Imagine a chessboard where instead of horns, knights, and bishops, we have missiles, drones, and cyber attacks. The rook isn't just a castling, it's launching satellites into orbit, and the queen She's busy deploying economic sanctions and espionage missions. Let's talk about the opening moves. The game begins with subtle moves, cyber attacks here, economic sanctions there. Think of it as the players testing each other's defenses, poking around to see who's going to blink first. The United States might start with a classic opening, imposing tariffs on China's imports. China counters with a cyber attack on American infrastructure. It's like game of cat and mouse, except the cat is armed with the nuclear weapons and the mouse has a PhD in hacking. Meanwhile, Russia might try the old land grab opening, stirring up trouble in Eastern Europe. NATO responds with troop deployments, while the EU issues strongly worded statements and contemplates another round of meetings. The opening moves are all about setting the stage, testing the waters, and generally causing enough tension to make international news ratings soar. Let's talk about the middle game. The middle game is where things get spicy. Alliances form, break, and reform like teenage relationships. Countries engage in proxy wars using smaller nations as their chess pieces. Picture Iran and Saudi Arabia locked in a bitter struggle, each backed by their respective superpower allies. It's the geopolitical equivalent of Mean Girls, but with more tanks and fewer snarky comebacks. In Asia, North Korea might decide to throw a tantrum, launching missile tests just to remind everyone it's still here. South Korea and Japan, the long-suffering neighbors, brace themselves for the inevitable fallout, both literal and figurative. Africa and South America watch from the sidelines, occasionally getting dragged into the fray when a superpower needs a new base of operations or a fresh supply of resources. It's a global game, and everyone's a pawn whether they like it or not. Let's talk about the end game. The end game of World War III is anyone's guess. Maybe it ends in stalemate, with nations retreating to lick their wounds and reassess their strategies. Perhaps one side emerges victorious, though at what cost? More likely, it all culminates in a series of awkward peace talks, where leaders who once hurled insult across Twitter now shake hands and pose for photo ops. In the aftermath, there's a rush to rebuild, both physically and diplomatically. Economies need stabilizing, and international relations need mending. The grand chessboard is packed away, but everyone knows it's only a matter of time before it's brought out again for the next round. Let's talk about the cosmic chessboard. In the end, World War III on the master chessboard is a terrifying yet darkly humorous spectacle of geopolitical maneuvering. It's a game where the stakes are existential. The moves are calculated and the players are always one step away from total annihilation. The only real winners are the defense contractors and the media companies who thrive on the chaos and keep us all riveted. So here's to the grand masters of geopolitics. May they always play their game with just enough sanity to avoid checkmate. And may in this game, there are no winners, only survivors. Cheers to the cosmic chessboard and the absurdity of it all thank you for listening to who through the curve don't forget to like us share us and subscribe I
Still can't talk about